Welcome to Ishkana, Graf Widow. As far as opening hand goes, yeah, I like it. We're going to keep on this one. Uh, we don't have a black source, unfortunately, for Grizzly Salvage, but at least we grapple with the pass. Hopefully, we'll be able to hit a black source, and they'll be able to go for Sylvan Library and get some really good... Uh, some really some really good stuff going and the fact that seeing that sylvan library reminds me i need to tell y'all um a, a good story let's go and get down orange reef the vast wood and then anything else now we're gonna go and pass the turn uh we're playing each kind graph widow uh reach delirium uh four more card types whenever each kind of enters the battlefield as long as we have delirium create three one two green spider creature tokens with reach then for seven mana a uh, target opponent loses one life for each spider that you control uh, we're playing against Trostanis, Selesnia's voice. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Then for three mana, populate. Let's go and get our commander squared over there. And our opponent's going to lead off with the secure tribe elder to get that land drop down. And then they'll be good to go. Now as far as next turn goes, more than likely we'll probably end up going for Sylvan Library. Um, we get that down and really start kind of digging into our library. Uh, one thing that we really need to watch out for is going to be some sort of life gain effect from our opponent. It's going to be really hard for us to kind of go anywhere with these Ishkana activations. Uh, if they get down something like the um oh, one drop white creature that you gain a bunch of life I, what is it anyway let's get the force down i'm gonna keep thinking about that let's get the civil library i can see both of their arts right now anyway you know what I'm talking about. This one drop <laughs> creature that you can gain a bunch of life. I'm sure we'll see it here in a second. Anything else? No, we're going to go and pass the turn. So we get in Sylvan Library. But, okay, so I've made a few changes to each kind of, as you can tell. I've got Gruesome Fate in the hand, which is a new card for the deck. Each opponent loses one life for each creature that you control. So it's a good three mana activation for each kind of that doesn't care about spiders. And then I had a little bit more uh, removal in here. We did add Never to Return. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of dredging in here, a lot of graveyard style stuff. So with Never to Return, uh, we can use it as spot removal, or if we dredge it, we can cast it out of the graveyard graveyard on it back in and then with a nice two, uh, zombie on the battlefield we're running parallel lives in here a lot of token matter themes in here so it's going to help us kind of get some good stuff going okay but it's going to lead off Tristani, and then i will finish that sylvan library story in here in a second let's go and get that going see if we can't hit the lane drop for the turn this could be the main thing that we are uh, looking to go for let's see what we run into there we go we draw into death right shaman and let's go and go for these yes we're going to use the sylvan library trigger for sure Yes, we're going to use that ability, and it's going to be Catacombs and Oracle. Um, yeah, I like I like being a little aggressive on this one. Um, let's go ahead and go pay for life to keep in the hand. <laughs> pay for life to keep in the hand. Oh, yes. Let's go ahead and get the Catacombs down. Um, let's go ahead and go for, uh, let's crack the Catacombs. Let's go ahead and grab Bayou off of that. And get down the Deathrite Shaman. Then we go for Grapple at the Pass, too. I think I like that. Let's get down the Deathrite Shaman. Actually, we can tap with green on this one. And with Orin Reef, if we want to, we could put a plus one counter on Deathrite Shaman. I think at this point, I'd actually rather going, end up going for Grizzly Salvage or Grapple at the Pass, to be perfectly honest. So I will probably end up going for that. Anything else? Now we're going to go and pass the turn. But yeah, I was, I was testing out Ishkana earlier, and I had Sylvan Library, and an Ancient Tomb. I had Sylvan Library in my opening hand, Ancient Tomb in my opening hand. I had Elves of Deep Shadow in my opening hand. And there's another damage producing card that I had. And I was just like, man, I wish I was recording so people could. Uh, Sit there and see. I mean, I think at one point it was like turn four or something when I was at like 13 life, and oh, it felt just absolutely wonderful. But I was going to get down the Sage Life Crafter. I, th I think I kind of like going for Grizzly Salvage on this one. If we're trying to go for Delirium with Ishkana, that's going to give us a, a better look at instead of just three cards in the graveyard, uh, we're going to be able to get that going. But if we end up going with Grapple in the Pass, we know for sure that we're going to end up Catacombs, which is going to work really good with Oracle. I think I like going for that instead. Let's do Let's go Grapple the Past. Let's go for that. Put the top three cards of our library into our graveyard. If we return a creature or land card, we're going to bring that catacombs back. Well, oh, it's a lot of lands. Um, let's go ahead and if we go for Gary Rob, it's going to come into play tapped. Uh, let's go for the catacombs. We're going to bring that back. Yes. We're going to bring the catacombs back. Um, and then since we did crack the catacombs, it's going to give us a fresh look at the, uh, the top of our library, Sylvan Library. So if we want to, instead of paying some life now, uh, we can actually start putting some of these lands uh, on top of our library, Sylvan Library, and use the Oracle to kind of make sure that we start getting those onto the battlefield, which would be pretty good. All right. We, ooh, we got Tristani swinging in for two. It's two commander damage. Usually she doesn't get her hands dirty, but I, I like this. So Tristani's going to swing in for two, put us down to 19, and then we'll see if we rip off the Sylvan Library. Yes, we're going to use that ability. Do we want to dredge off the deck more salvage yeah that'll be a definitely a land that we can put on top uh westfell abbey then uh sky shroud claim the dredges off of that it's going to draw an additional card off the sylvan library yes we're going to use that ability and that's going to be hero's downfall and woodland cemetery um let's go ahead and put the woodland cemetery on top of our library 
Yeah, and I like holding. We're going to pay four life to hold on to Hero's Downfall. We can kind of stop that from happening. Let's go ahead and get down the... Um, let's get the Catacombs down. If we do this, actually exile land from the grave. We're going to exile that swamp out of our graveyard. Add some mana to our mana pool. We're going to be able to get down Oracle. And then I know we can go for Orin Reef, but I kind of want to leave that land on top to make sure we can go for that. Let's get the forest down. Uh, let's go for Oracle. At this point right now, um, we've got enough removal in here to wear a plus one counter on Oracle. You know, it might make a difference in the end where we can swing in, but um, I'm not choosing to put a plus one counter on it. We'll see if we can't utilize that with Ishkana coming down. All right, let's go ahead and get the Wood in the Cemetery down. Uh, Frexian Tower is going to be another way for us to kind of filter off of that. And it's going to be Baron more off the top. Um, this going to be Hero's Downfall. Um, anything else? I guess technically we could sacrifice Deathrite Shaman if we wanted to, but I, I think on this one, I like holding up on this. That's fine. A uh, worst case scenario, if something kind of crazy happens next turn, uh, we can use uh, Frexian Tower to sacrifice Deathrite Shaman to add that double black to our mana pool, and then go for Hero's Downfall. But I kind of like this spread that we've got going on. And luckily, with having eight cards in the hand, we can actually get rid of uh, some sort of artifact that'll really help us. So I think on this one, we'll probably end up getting rid of Worn Power Stone. Uh, this is going to give us Delirium. Uh, we'll see, be sitting at four card types, and then we'll we can get down Gilded Lotus and really kind of start working towards uh, developing our board state. But yeah, last game. <laughs> It felt really good, Sylvan Library and Ancient Tomb, and it was kind of one of those games where um, I wish I was recording, but we just got off to such a quick start, and our opponent was a really good sport, and um, I, and then of all things, we run into Growing Rights of Itlamok, and then off of that Growing Rights of Itlamok, um, you know, at one point, I had doubling Season down, we go, we go for Ishkana, and then uh, next thing you know... Gurk Wild Speaker, okay. Um, next thing you know, we're tapping that Itlamok for like 30 mana for activation for Ishkana, and I was just like, oh my goodness. Some, some good magic. But yes, as far as new cards of the deck. Okay, opponent's going to create a beast token. Um, I think at this point, we don't have another creature in the hand. We can definitely get one down if we wanted to. I'm trying to figure out if we want to sacrifice Death Threat Shaman to take care of the Gurk Primal Speaker. We can just wait until next turn. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But yeah, as far as new cards in the deck, we did add a Groots from Fate, which is going to hopefully kind of help us out. Maybe kind of close the game out. Um, Trostani swinging in for two. Yeah, that's fine. Go for it. We'll take that too. Let's put us down to 13. Uh, we are getting into the uh, area of no more Sylvan Library activations, uh, unless it's just something that's really good. Uh, we do have Baron Moore on top, so at least we're going to be able to kind of put that back on top so we can put it down with Oracle. But we'll see what else is going to be on top, and then especially with Heroes Downfall on Gurk Primal Speaker. I uh, should end up with a pretty good turn. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Make the land drop. We have two that we can get down to. A Sylvan Library. It's going to be Traverse the Olvenwald, and we will have that online for Delirium too, so we'll see if we actually want to grab that one, and we can put that Baron Moor back on top. Yes, yeah, so we're going to use that ability. Okay, um, let's go ahead and put the uh, Baron Moor on top of our library. Let's go ahead and put the Tranquil Thicket on top of our library. Okay, and kick it back over there. Um, let's go ahead and get down the Tranquil Thicket. It's going to come into play tap. Baron Moor is going to come into play tapped. Um, let's go ahead and go for that Gilded Lotus. That's going to be us completely tapping out. Now, one, two, three, four, and then five. Now, what we are going to be able to do is we're going to go for Hero's Downfall and Gurt Primal Speaker, which we're just going to go ahead and do that now. Destroy that one. That's going to be three total black mana off that Gilded Lotus. And then we're going to use that Deathrite Shaman to kind of search something up. Uh, Dark Tutelage is pretty much not exactly where we want to be at this point in the game right now. Um, it's fine if we don't have something down, but we've got some good card draw going. I was going to exile the Golgari Rot Farm out of the graveyard. We're still going to maintain that Delirium, which is going to be important. And we're going to add green to our mana pool. And we're going to go, going to go ahead and go for Traverse. Search your library for a basic... Um, search your library for a creature or a land card. There we go. Okay. Let's go and bounce this out. I thought I misread that or something for a second. Let's see what's going to help us out. Let's go and go for Tireless Tracker. I, I think I like that. Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty good. Let's go for Tireless Tracker. It's going to go into our hand. It's going to be Kodama's Reach on top of our library. Um, anything else. Now we're going to go and pass the turn. Now they will be able to swing in for five up to six next turn. Uh, but hopefully we're just going to be able to stabilize. We can finally get down each Kana. We've got more than enough mana to get those spiders down. It would have been nice to have something like Parallel Lives to really kind of double the number of uh, tokens that we have. But uh, we still have a couple of different options in the deck. You know, if we can find our way into... Um, Panharmonicon is definitely good for us, and if we can find Conjurer's Closet, that's going to allow us to really start getting those uh, spider tokens onto the battlefield. All right, Pot is going to get down the Wolf Blood. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other white creatures, ooh, all right. 
a little bit of a clock. Yeah, we'll definitely be getting down to Ishkana next turn because that's going to be four, eight, and that's going to be ten coming across the next turn. So that's going to pretty be a pretty good chunk of damage. And I think on this one we might end up um, chump blocking with Oracle on this one. Or we'll be okay with that one, especially if they're ju if they're just swinging in with six. Yeah, we'll go for that. Let's chump block on Oracle on the Beast token. That's going to be six, putting us down to seven, and then we'll finally allow us to kind of just go ahead and just go ahead and stabilize with that uh, Ishkana Graph Widow. And then plus with the Tireless Tracker, that's going to be another way for us to really start drawing into some cards, especially if we put it on top of our library uh, with Sylvan Library. All right, Kodama's Reach. Let's see what else we can draw into off the Sylvan Library. Yes, we're going to use that ability. Um, that's going to be uh, Polluted Delta and the Excavator. Let's go ahead and put the um, Kodama's Reach on top of our library. Let's go ahead and put the Polluted Delta on top of our library too. Okay, um, let's go ahead and go for Ishkana. We do have that Delirium online. That's going to be Triple Green. And then tap out for the Baron Moor. Get on each Kana. And what we can do with this one is use finally use that Orn Reef to put those plus one counters on the uh, the three spider tokens. And we'll get an additional one on that one too. I'm just going to get down the Tireless Tracker. It's going to be green. And then Frexian Tower. And then one more. Get down the Tireless Tracker. Uh, let's go and get the Dakmore Salvage. Put that into play tap. We'll get a clue token off of that. And then... Um, we can actually, yeah, we'll go and go for the Orn Reef, put a plus one counter on each green creature that entered the battlefield, and that'll still put us online on exiling a land card out of the graveyard uh, with Death Rite Shaman, or we can simply just leave it up. Okay, uh, anything else? No, I think we're going to go and pass the turn. Now, our opponent is sitting at 40 life, but with a gruesome fate, uh, we do need to find some way to kind of start going for Ishkana uh, to kind of stop these chump blockers, but at least with simply just a 4 4 out there and a 4 7, uh, if we're just simply going to run Ishkana into whatever they're swinging across, we should be able to stabilize, and especially with the excavator uh, we'll be able to sh make sure that we can keep making our land drops okay get down the uh, get down the wolf token uh, it just works so good with that uh the wolf bond i really like that and if they're going to go for the uh, five mana activation create an xx colorless contract token where x is the number of creatures that you control so it's going to be a little bit of a grindy match Ooh, especially doubling season out there i'm um, gonna see if we can't find acidic slime to take care of that doubling season because that's really gonna um <laughs> It's really going to add up to some life gain. Okay, in fact, I, th I think I don't mind going for that clue token. I mean, I guess technically, we, if we hold on to the excavator, we can go for Westfell Abbey. But I just don't think we're in a position to be sacrificing a lot of our spider tokens. Yeah, let's go and do that. Let's go and exile a card from um, out of our graveyard. Let's go and exile that Westfell Abbey. I guess technically we could gain some life off of that, but really want to get some good card draw going. Actually, can we back out of that? No, we can't. Uh, let's go green and then black. Let's go for the clue token. Okay, we're going to get that card draw off the clue token, drawn to Polluted Delta. And then we draw into Kodama's Reach. Let's go and use the Sylvan Library. At this point, we just need some sort of bounce effect. Yes, we're going to use that ability. Uh, Vraska, ooh, wonderful. is going to be able to take care of that doubling season. We absolutely need that. I was going to put the Treetop Village on top of our library. Let's go and put Kodama's Reach on top of our library, too. There we go. Um, let's go and get the Catacombs down. I'll get another clue token off of that. Off the Tireless Tracker. Uh, let's go and tap out for Vraska. They're going to gain a life, yeah. I was going to go for triple green, apple, actually triple black. Let's go for Vraska. That's going to be one, two. And then tap out for one more green and one more Dak, more salvage. That was a beautiful draw. Thank you, Vraska. I was going to go for the minus three ability on that doubling season to make sure that we can really kind of escape out from underneath those uh, tokens that our opponents can be going for. So minus three on the doubling season. Let's go and get the excavator down. That's going to be green, black, and then actually let's tap out for the woodland cemetery. That way we can start making some land drops out of the graveyard too. Um, then anything else that we're going to go for. don't really want to go for Read the Bones at this point right now. Um, I think we're just going to go and pass the turn. We still have the Catacombs to go for. Uh, we still have Overgrown Tomb that we can get down to end up with another Clue Token. And still go ahead and um, at least crack that Clue Token to get a little bit more card draw going. Um, anything else. Now we're going to go and pass the turn. But yeah, as far as this deck goes, this is your first time seeing Ishkana. Um, Ishkana originally started out as like 100% Spider Tribal. And it was not good. <laughs> It was not, I mean, it was not fun to play. It was not fun to record with. And it did not, I think what ended up happening is that first weekend that it released, each kind of, I was so excited about it. Like I, I, I paid like way too much money for it on Magic Online through the classifieds because I wanted to record and have like each kind of videos out that night because um, it released on Magic Online that Thursday. All right, but it's going to go for Swords to Plowshare in response. I mean, not in response, but go for Swords to Plowshare on Tireless Tracker. Um, let's go ahead and go for... Let's get some clue tokens cracked off this one. So we're going to go for the catacombs. 
Because what's going to be happening is um, if we make the tiles tracker a little bit bigger, um, what we can do is end up, um, yeah, actually, we're actually going to go and grab a forest off this one. Uh, we can actually gain a little bit more life once we get these clue tokens cracked. And we'll have just enough to go for that too. Um, let's go and go for the um, crack this lax uh, clue token. Next, oh, yeah, there we go. The clue uh, triggers on the stack. There we go. So, for some reason, I thought we missed on that clue token. But yeah, once we get that trigger down, I will crack both of those and gain a little bit of extra life. Okay, I'm just going to crack this clue token. And this is pretty much what you want to be doing in a green black rock style deck when commander, you know, it's just kind of really grindy matches like this. I'm loving it. I'm just going to crack the clue token, get an additional counter on Tyler's tracker. That'll give us a little bit of a buffer. That way we're not having to worry about some sort of alpha swing or something like that. A um, little bit of a life total buffer. Okay, we're going to end up with another plus one counter on Tireless Tracker. It's going to make it a 7-6. We're going to draw an additional card, draw into Dark Tutelage. Not really looking to get that down at this point. Draw into Tainted Wood. Okay. Now, we'll end up with 7 life on this one, putting us back to 13. Um, anything else that our opponent's going to go for. Um, we can start exiling stuff out of the graveyard. Exile target creature card. Uh, that is the Tribe Elder, so we can go for that to gain a little bit of extra life. But let's see what they're going to go for on this one. Is it Overwhelming Stampede? or Oh. <laughs> Oh, we dirtled too long. All right, let's see. And they're going to gain Trample. We're at 13. Can we stop this? Let's see. That's going to be 16. That's going to be, oh, man, 16 plus 7 is 23, 29. It's going to be 37, 3, 6, 9, 12, 18. I don't think we have enough. Dang it. All right, so we dirtled too much. Sorry about that. I was really hoping that we could just pay a bunch of life and just kind of basically <laughs> get into spots where we could close it out with these Kana activations. We're not getting to swing in from the Wolf Bond. Wolf Bond. Um, I guess that's going to be 2, 4, 6, 2 come across. With them swinging across with 8, that's going to be 14. That's going to be 22, and that's going to be exactly 30. I just... Yeah, with the trample, I don't think there's really any sort of way that we can actually block on all these. Because we have 3, 6, 9. That's going to be 12, 18, then 20. And they're still going to be able to trample over... Well, we'll just wipe out across the board, I think. Uh, let's go ahead and chump block on the... Her, right there. I think if my math is correct, we might be able to survive this for a turn. I think. Maybe. Maybe I just did some math wrong, but anyway, they, they might have it on this one since they didn't swing in with the wolf bond. That might put us in like the three range or something like that once they kind of apply all that damage out. But uh, we'll go for that, and then we have Raska next turn, which is really not going to do much because I doubt they're going to swing in at Raska. But who knows? We might draw into some sort of board wipe that has put us down to two. End up with at least one more spider token, and then let's see if we can't get lucky off of that. Now, unfortunately, if we go for something like reads the, read the bones, it's not going to do much. All right, they're going to gain that life off the uh, the Voha token, and then since it's a legendary creature token, let's to choose which one they want to keep onto the battlefield. But we'll see what we can draw into to get us out of this one. But at this point right now, it's pretty slim pickings, I think, on this one. About the only thing that we could top deck that would really help us out would be Arachnogenesis, because uh, that way we'd end up with a lot of spider tokens. But let's see what we... Uh, fork in the road, that ain't going to do it. Let's go for the Sylvan Library. Maybe we can dig a little bit deeper for that. Yes, we're going to use Sylvan Library's ability. And second harvest in the Lana War Elves. Yeah, I don't think. Okay, um, let's go and do this. Let's go and put Fork in the Road. Let's put second harvest on top. Put Lana War Elves on top. Let's go for Fork in the Road. That way we can get a fresh look at. Oh, we're in our draw step. There we go. Okay. Like, there's a very, very slim out to this one. Um, let's go Fork in the Road. We can Grizzly Salvage into Eternal Witness, and we have to flip Arachnogenesis off the Grizzly Salvage and then use Eternal Witness to bring it back. I mean, it's very, just very far out there, but who knows. So we're going to go for Fork in the Road to kind of shuffle up our library because we know what's on top. We don't want to reveal those off of uh, Grizzly Salvage. We're going to grab a Swamp and then a Forest. Uh, forest goes into the Graveyard. Um, let's go and go for that Grizzly Salvage. Uh, simply because we can't go for Read the Bones. It's not going to be that good. So let's see if we get lucky. Um, other than that, I don't think we're going to get it done. Yep, Damnation. Oh, Damnation was right there. We're almost away from it. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and scoop it up. Opponent's going to get it on this one. We kind of dirtled too long. But uh, unfortunately, we could never find anything to get uh, start bouncing each con to get those activations going. But uh, something like Overwhelming Stampede can definitely close the game out. You can see where... Uh, Giving all your creatures trample plus X plus X is more than enough to kind of go and close it out. But as far as, I'm trying to remember what that story was. 
Oh, that's what it was. I was talking about whenever Ishikana got released. I'll go and finish that story since we lost, so that way I can give you something to kind of entertain you with. But anyway, so I, I got the card that day, and then I recorded videos that night and released them like as soon as I recorded them. And it was Spider Tribal, and it was not that good. And it was not bad. And Ishikana has been very much a work in progress since then. I went from Spider Tribal to basically just Green Black Rock Control, which is what it is kind of now. And, and still kind of going for those Ishikana activations, which is, you know, always a lot of fun. Use stuff like Growing Rights of Itlamok to kind of go for those extra activations and get those spider tokens going. But unfortunately, the opponent's going to have it with the overwhelming stampede. So if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.